Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'll leave out the uh, official address because I could forget some of you. So, dear colleagues, I think we have uh, already heard the essential things. To, so, to save time, let me just point out uh, several items to follow up uh, Dr. Dvořák, who spoke about the positive aspects of the pandemic. Uh, so let me reiterate that all the activities of research institutions, not just the Academy of Sciences, all these activities came from the bottom up and they were spontaneous. So it was not the management of the institutions, it was individual scientific um, specialists, molecular biologists and so on, who uh, then helped to get the certificate. Sometimes it took a long time to have a certificate for testing, but that's another story. It wasn't just testing that uh, uh, research institutions helped with. Uh, it was the most discussed uh, issue at the beginning, but some, Dr. Petracek will speak about it, was the development of new protective uh, personal equipment or new materials. Uh, so that was a huge impulse for R&D institutions to develop new materials uh, which uh, at various stages of the pandemic were necessary and probably will also be useful in the future. Then another impulse uh, that will stay for the future, and that was uh, mentioned by Dr. Konvalinka and Professor Hajduk and others, and that is the research of the virus. So, in addition to having a highly specialized lab for a high degree of infection, you have to have the virus to reproduce it and also infect to grow it. So it's not just the research of the virus mentioned by Professor Hajduk, the structure of the virus, its proteins and uh, RNAs, but it's also, also means to study the speed of mutation, how long it uh, will stay in the human population. And there are even many uh, interesting evolutionary things that can come useful in the future, because it's definitely not the last coronavirus uh, that uh, will have attacked us. And then some research methods uh, also named by Dr. Konvalenka, Professor Hajduk. We are not on first name terms, so I call him Professor Hajduk. This was a spontaneous development that was necessary. Uh, we heard about uh, isolation by magnetic beads. There are many other possibilities. There are antibodies of the patients which uh, can be tested or very fast or PCR. There is a third method. We are working on it together with the Taiwan Academy uh, and it's a test uh, that uh, at our physical institute, uh, there is a chip, and uh, mononuclear antibody can be bind to it, not of the patient, but against uh, a protein of the virus, as protein, the spike protein, which is on the tips uh, of the spikes of the virus. So. It's now being tested, and I uh, can uh, 
uh, say no more about it now, but it has the advantages of the methods. It detects the virus or the uh, RNA, and it's very fast because it's based on antibodies. And the chip, when you have the antibodies bound to it, it can be used uh, repeatedly for testing. So that means uh, that uh, not it can be used not only for SARS-CoV-2, it can be also used for uh, Salmonella, for example. Uh, another thing which is being developed at the moment, which might be interesting for you, is the improvement of the uh, PCR testing method, but a method which can be calibrated and which is quantifiable. The present um, methods are not quantifiable. Uh, so you have the acid and then you detect it. Uh, the method developed, then the Biophysical Institute uh, can be calibrated. When you take samples, you can learn all about the dynamics. Uh, and Professor Hajduk will confirm it. In the samples, you have uh, different levels of RNA, and it does not only depend on the swab. So these are things uh, which uh, regard uh, the new trends uh, provoked, really, by the epidemic. I have also mentioned uh, collaboration, and let me also stress <coughs> what I did at the press conference. The pandemic has demonstrated what a complex matter this is. It's not just medical. It affects the entire world and all the spheres of life, social contacts which affect the spread of the virus. Uh, then, of course, economy, Dr. Uraida will speak about it, and uh, other things such as some legal standards. Our colleagues have prepared a kind of cookbook uh, for clinicians. If they had to choose, there are five respirators, but 10 people who need them. The key, how to choose them, that it's really fair and just, uh, and also to avoid legal problems uh, of a clinician. So it's a whole range of things. Uh, uh, there is an institute for uh, contemporary history at the academy, and during the state of emergency, they have been recording everything, who said what, various people in various social groups. So they are working on the oral history, uh, and they can come to interesting conclusions. Also, a philosopher said, <coughs> if you don't learn from your history, you are fated to, to repeat it. So, uh, social, uh, social sciences, humanities will play uh, an important role in our response in how we cope with the pandemic. Science means investing into near future and also distant future. The pandemic has shown that our country has a relatively developed scientific infrastructure. Now, I don't mean specific infrastructures, but uh, throughout the country. Dr. Konvalinka summed it up very nicely. This is of key inform importance so that the country can defend itself against viral or bacterial pandemic, or it can be related to some disasters, a tsunami or volcano eruption. So this scientific infrastructure is of key importance, and scientists do wish to fulfill its mission, as we could see. Scientists need uh, a few things, a stable 
environment which can be uh, found or established only if there is the right ratio between institutional uh, funding and uh, funding for a specific purpose. So I don't know how it goes at uh, universities in the academy. The average is about 35% from institutional funding. That's too little. Institutions get some money for their work, but it's only short-term projects. So people just uh, ask for grants and so on and so on. Uh, so uh, it, it's, uh, in fact, uh, uh, this is ratio. And uh, it's important for the stability of the research infrastructure. So all of us, uh, we don't want us to do routine testing, routine work. But if a crisis occurs, then it's our duty to do things uh, as they should be done. And uh, maybe one last uh, thing. Uh, I'm doing this on behalf of the Academy, and it's all in goodwill. The Academy of Sciences uh, is the only institution which, with the exception of clinical medicine, covers all disciplines. So we could uh, talk to each other, uh, advise each other, and so on. It has turned out uh, that uh, the borderline uh, between basic and applied research can be very thin, but this is not specific for the academy. And in the rhetoric of allocating finances, uh, this may maybe slow down uh, the search or m makes it more complicated because you have to uh, wonder, can I apply for this grant or not because I only do applied research. No, in fact, it's uh, a continuous process and many things from basic research uh, uh, just passed on to application very fast. Petr Dvořák is not here. I just had a um, tiny detail for him. I think uh, there are very good publications and there will be more of them. So it's not the goal to win by having 10 books on COVID. Thank you. Dear distinguished uh, president, dear colleagues, participants in this highly interesting conference. Well, by way of introduction, I wish to say that under the title of Research Infrastructure as a part of the critical infrastructure of the state, I uh, take it as all uh, everything simply we have at uh, disposal available for top quality research. Uh, I mean, uh, regardless of the institutes of academy or apart from institutes of academy of sciences, universities, etc. A rector's conference takes that this way. And in June, we stated that uh, Czech higher education or university education fulfills the task. And at the time of overcoming uh, the consequences of uh, coronavirus pandemic. This should become uh, top and foremost priority, which means supporting higher AGI, higher education institutions, and Czech science support, uh, research, etc. All the presidents of Czech Senate um, agree or reached a consensus. 
in that respect. A mix of uh, education and consistent cultivation and support of science is a must for the future generation of explorers or researchers, without whom no advanced society can do. It's in the sense of that's the substance of country for the future logo, which the government has often used, and Mr. Havlicek also articulated this uh, sort of a slogan or motto. We do appreciate the involvement and commitment of students and also universities' background that was made available to all the activities associated with uh, tackling or trying to solve all national uh, issues. The list of activities is really long, and to give you a clear summary would um, not be possible because of the limited time I have. Therefore, I will leave it to the uh, presentations by experts later on. We also heard many interesting things from Mr. Konvalinka, my Marianne Haidu, and we'll hear ever more now. I wish to stress that not only her education institutions, are, I mean, placed in traditional, so to say, venues got involved, but all the HEIs, uh, some cases are well covered by media, some others are not. Nevertheless, there is one thing they share in common, creativity, adaptability, and also simply readiness and willingness to help and cooperate whenever possible. From this point of view, we have to say that there is no border between different disciplines. A lot of attention is focused on testing, then uh, development of potential vaccine, smart quarantine project, and last but not least, technical sciences that uh, develop new materials as uh, to be used in filters, face masks, 3Ds, the longer ventilators, special face shields, productive clothes, and sanitizers or solutions to be used by sanitizers. I'm sure that all that will be covered by Mr. Petracek, Czech Technical University Rector, and societal sciences are of the same importance. It is essential to be able to cope with um, economic crises. Uh, we have to prevent the uh, losses of jobs, prevent people getting into debt traps. And uh, the uh, of utmost importance is, um, I mean, that our economy picks up again, Professor Stepanek. Oh, one of the speakers will suddenly talk about that. Now, uh, impact on pandemic in the world, in the Nature Journal, uh, there were references to empty auditoriums and issues associated with distance education that will, in the long run, result in a drop in foreign students studying here, which, again, may have a negative impact on the available resources of funds for education. Look at the US. Uh, the pro President Trump's uh, statements, etc., and it does have an impact on us as well. Uh, positive or a, an advantage is that perhaps universities will be better perceived and will be seen as significant institutions for the society thanks to their activities in the fight against pandemics, COVID-19 and pandemics. And it also has to do with international mobility. Science is an international exercise. And if uh, we have drop in the demand of uh, students uh, wanting to study at HEIs is bad enough. So let us prevent further outflow or decrease in uh, foreign students and potential researchers. 
You can't replace education. I mean, a regular uh, day of full studies, you can't replace it by remote or home-based studies, and the same applies for work and research. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And I would like to welcome you not only here in this plenary hall, but as well all our colleagues from the European Commission, which are online. And I hope that the interpretation is going well and that the transmission between Prague and Brussels is okay as well. I said a few things in English, but I'm going to speak in Czech, but my presentation is in English. Uh, that is, the slides are in English. Let me focus on some areas we have not heard about yet, and these are some economic aspects. I have a few slides showing um, the development over the last 10 years. Funding of R&D, you can see the overall structure of funding. You can see very sharp growth of private resources, but I am also pleased that even the national government sources are growing. And the pink curve, that is uh, European structural investment funds. Uh, we are moving in waves, so it's logical that the biggest expenditures are usually reached in the third third uh, of expenditure. That is why the peak in uh, 12, 2012, 14, 16 is different. And then you have a new peak. Structural funds uh, have helped to influence the structure of R&D in the Czech Republic. Of course, we can uh, put the bureaucratic burden in doubt, but uh, uh, it has helped many institutions to find a new raison d'etre, a new direction. When we look at the so-called additionality, the added value, we can see that in addition to incentives, it is research mainly that uh, has been influenced and formed over the last 10 years by structural funds. Also, universities, uh, when we look at uh, uh, R&D expenditures, again, uh, over the last 10 years, we can see more than a double uh, rise in absolute uh, numbers. But we can also see the light blue showing the additional resources coming from European structure and investment funds. This is also a central, non-negligible factor. As you know, we created all these centers and some centers of excellence and new research centers. The projects have then ended in 2015. Uh, they are still sustained. The National Program of Sustainability is also still running. And I am very happy that many of them have uh, managed to defend their positions. And also, these sites will still continue, or there will be a continuation of their work in the future. These sites also influence the research ecosystems. The intervention from Abhi has may of uh, be innovation uh, has also succeeded in increasing funding for R and D. So you can see the. FTE uh, jobs for researchers. Prague is not really here. Prague as a highly developed uh, 
region, uh, of course, is of importance. Here are some other uh, graphs or charts, so you can see how the outputs of research have improved. There are published articles, the blue line, patents, the purple one, or uh, industrial and utility designs. So you can see the, the added value for institutions if they are careers of infrastructure, finance of, from European uh, funds, then the Horizon 2020. Uh, in, uh, in fact, uh, framework programs, the success rate of those who have used European funds uh, is almost four times uh, bigger. It may not be causality or correlation, but uh, it is a phenomenon that can be observed in uh, the current program period coming to an end uh, now. Then in R&D, we have supported uh, over 500 projects. Uh, without building new centers of excellence. But we focus on uh, development, uh, on uh, excellent work, and also human resources, and the support of large uh, infrastructures. Uh, the president has also mentioned mobility. And I am happy that we could also uh, we could also help with R and D, OBR and AI. As you can see the figures, uh, with all the numbers of persons, and you can see the mobilities as they are uh, divided into countries. Germany ranks first, uh, then the United States, and Austria, and Great Britain. So, of course, Brexit, we are sure, may uh, affect incoming and out going mobility. Uh, I would also like uh, to give some thanks. Uh, the European projects uh, have helped in combating coronavirus. And also uh, other speakers will mention it. There's uh, Rika Ipsaitek, uh, also uh, the Czech Agriculture University. They've all helped. And testing and testing capacities, Bioserv, uh, the Pelatsky University in Almasitek again or supercomputer IT for innovations. They have also helped, uh, also indirectly perhaps. So I'd like to thank all those uh, institutions. They have shown they can use the background, so thanks to European funds. And the European Commission has facilitated to use these capacities to combat coronavirus. European funds uh, uh, have very strict rules, so this uh, was not something you can take for granted. Uh, now, how to conclude my presentation? We have already heard that uh, a highly developed uh, infrastructure is the basis. The Ministry of Education must assure in the future program period to support uh, to support the infrastructure. Uh, the impact may be different than in 
uh, in applied research as for basic research, but still it's um, standard, flexible. What we have built from uh, Czech or European money will help us to face future threats uh, we may not avoid. Without the infrastructure, the situation might be much worse. The pandemic has shown that funding of research makes sense. And I hope that will also convince the European Commission about its importance to assure a stable funding of big research infrastructures. Thank you very much.